Alright lads. Birthdays. They're a once in a lifetime experience if you never make it past the age of one. And as it so happens, it is Barty's birthday today. Now where could he be? Why, he's only hiding under his birthday fez. Come on out you silly gibber. Birthdays are only an indication of how your time on this earth is running out. It's a milestone of how there's not much time left and the inevitability of death comes no, rushing Marty, in. It's your birthday, no need to be a pessimist. No, don't tell him yet. But it's Marty's birthday. I got him this. I'm sure you'll love it. Hey, Marty, I got this for you. Birthdays, they happen. Sometimes they can actually be pretty good. And other times they feel like being kicked in the balls by a horse. And because my beloved mummy has given me half an hour on the iPad, I thought I would use that time to make a video about anniversaries and gaming. And since it's in the thumbnail, the joke at the start, and that other little joke I made earlier, let's start with Sonic the Hedgehog, who himself can be a joke at times. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags, not clips, you absolute dummy. When Sonic turned 15, puberty greeted him with one of the worst games of all time. So Sonic was 6, it had game breaking glitches, terrible plot, yada yada, one of the worst Sonic games ever. Five years later however, things were looking up, with Sonic Generations being the big anniversary game when Sonic became 20 in 2011. His 25th anniversary was a bit of a mixed bag. Why? Well, because the fantastic Sonic Mania was announced in his 25th anniversary, but the absolutely awful Sonic Forces was revealed. Now, I love Mania a lot, so I don't actually mind this anniversary, but Forces is so bad that if you're a 3D Sonic fan, I do pity you. And his 30th anniversary was also rather mixed. Yes, there was the announcement of Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Origins. Sonic Origins had some really nice cutscenes, but at points proved itself to be a rather lazy ma remaster. And there was also Sonic Frontiers, which many actually really loved, but for many it was just a bit boring and received pretty average reviews. Happy birthday, your father's dead. Happy birthday, you just won a million pounds. Happy birthday, you just won a million pounds. And your mother's dead. No, I have a calculator. Now I think it's about time we explore the anniversaries of gaming's favourite Italian diabetic. That's right, Super Mario. Oh no. So, we start with the first major Mario anniversary, which is his 25th anniversary in 2010. Bear in mind, this is for the Super Mario Brothers uh, anniversary, not the anniversary of the character himself. So in 2010, what's currently going on in the history of Mario? Well, Super Mario Galaxy 2 came out this year, but it's not really known as an anniversary game, it's not really associated with the anniversary. Rather, the anniversary game is something a lot more underwhelming, a re-release of a Super Nintendo game with little to no changes, which in itself was a remaster of NES games. This was such a Nintendo thing to do. So, yeah, Super Mario All-Stars for the Wii was a pretty terrible deal. So, we move on to Mario's 30th anniversary, but we don't, because in between, in 2013, something rather unusual happened. Yes, the year of Luigi. Why was this year of Luigi? Well, Luigi was now 30, yet still living in his parents' house, per Luigi. For the celebration of everyone's favourite player too, we were given Luigi's Dark Moon and Mario and Luigi Dream Team on the 3DS. On the Wii U, we were given Dr. Luigi, New Super Luigi U, and a Luigi Bros mode in the game Super Mario 3D World, which also released that year. So, Lu the year of Luigi. Did anything come from it? Well, it actually turned out to be one of Nintendo's worst years in terms of making money just didn't go well for them at all because of the failing Wii U. However, this does show that Luigi is so powerful and so undeniably godly 
that he had the power to take down an entire company, almost. Have mercy, Luigi. Have mercy. Now, in 2015, Super Mario Bros became 30. So, what did Nintendo do for that? They released Super Mario Maker for the Wii U, which is actually a very cool idea. And they also released some special amiibo, an encyclopedia. But that is all old news, because this now brings us to 2020. Mario is becoming 35 and starting to have a midlife crisis. Why? Well, one game released for this anniversary was Super Mario 3D All-Stars, a limited time release of three of Mario's 3D adventures, 64, Sunshine and Galaxy. Now, the worst thing about this remaster, despite the fact it was fairly lazy and patched together, is the fact that it was only available for around six months. This is like if you were given a kidney donation as your old one stopped really working, but you had to give your kidney back after a few days. Here, have a kidney. Three days till you give us your kidney back. However, Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury came out as well this year, so not all things were bad. This was very good because Mario 3D World was almost a perfect remaster of the original game, and Bowser's Fury was a very fun little side add-on. The Zelda series also celebrates milestones from its evolution from fetus to snack. When the series hit 25, it had a rather divisive celebration. Scabbard Sword was a truly big release which many, including me, love for its enduring charm, and others hate it because arms. Moving them isn't natural, is it? A messy cannon was also developed in this year in the form of a branch key from biology class. Along with this Ocarina of Time 3DS remake and Four Swords Anniversary edition, which was on the DSi. Five years later, the cannon was rebooted. By that, I mean two game swap places. Twilight Princess also received a remarkably beautiful remake. <laughs> New Amiibo was made, Breath of the Wild news went wild, and an encyclopedia was released. One which I own and use frequently to drop on strangers heads. When Zelda turned 35, Nintendo re-released a 10 year old Wii game. Many were so outraged that even Ben Shapiro covered it on his show. So um, let's say hypothetically, um, you're uh, uh, with Joe Rogan and you're uh, at McDonald's and you're saying, uh, what do we order? And he says, cheeseburgers. And for the sake of the argument, let's say you meet Joe Rogan 10 years later. And then he's like, pull it up, Jamie. And he presents you with some human fecal matter. It's the same cheeseburger from 10 years ago. It's just this time in defecated form. Using facts and logic, this is a metaphor for the release of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD and the Nintendo Switch in 2021 for The Legend of Zelda's 35th anniversary. Nintendo also gave some tears to the Kingdom News, which was... FAKE NEWS! Now, that's all from me for three major anniversaries in the Smash series. If you want more, be sure to say, like, subscribe, and bog off.